This is Gary Atensu with CNTV, and today we're in Broomfield, Colorado. We're at the World Alliance for Retail Excellence and Standards. I'm here with Tom Cadell, who is the director, executive director. Basically, for over 17 years, you guys have been performing over $3 billion in the services annually. Let me ask you, when you first started out back in 95, 96, what were they hoping to achieve? And tell me what was going on back then. Well, the visionaries, their hope was to be able to have an association that brought value to the industry across all channels. So whether it was grocery, what's convenience, apparel, uh, sporting goods, whatever it may be, that was the goal, to bring a group together and, and really try to nurture each other, network together, share good practices, research, all along those lines. So we're talking about a total collaboration upon all facets of the retail service industry. Correct, correct. Yes, it was all on those lines. Wonderful. One of the things, obviously, anybody who's part of the, as a membership here, um, everyone benefits. Why don't we start a little specifically as a manufacturer? Mm -hmm. What type of benefits are they going to receive being part of your network? Well, the manufacturers are usually um, one level below actual decision maker. The decision maker really is the retailer. The retailer mandates programs that happen in the store. A manufacturer would be part of that decision making process because it's up to them to find a resource, whether it's internal, external, or a hybrid approach. So they're really the, the end of where the actual payment would come from, but they still have to adhere to the mandates coming from the retailer. So from a manufacturer point of view, they want to find the best they want to find the most professional service. They want to make sure that that's a partner that protects their brand. As a retailer out there, what are some of the services, and maybe touch on just one of the popular services that you offer for them? Well, that's a, that's a hard question because we are a very diverse membership. And, and, you know, most of the services out there in today's economies, they do a little of everything. Mm -hmm. In most cases, Originally, they started 17 years ago as maybe an event marketing company that did, you know, robust marketing efforts. That's evolved into merchandising, event marketing, professional install. So they've all kind of merged together in some capacity. There are some groups that still have really one channel that they work in or one division of work processes they handle through that, you know, program. But the majority of our members are service companies. They do activity-based cost services within a retailer environment. So that's it's kind of well broad, but it, that's a, really what it is. It's, it's hard to pinpoint one. Absolutely. In 2002, you brought on a tool which was the recruiter. Is this still something you're going to be offering for folks? Absolutely. Uh, in, in the recruiter days, when it first started out, it was one of the first and the only ones that was on the uh, available to companies looking and seeking out, you know, uh, resources from external staff or an internal staff, you know, surge work. It, it evolved, and in today, here we are with so many other platforms out there from Indeed, uh, you know, uh, snag a job. I mean, there is a plethora of them out there. Every company has their own internal job site, you know, recruitment site. They've got directors of recruitment internally. That position never really was there before. It was always HR. HR didn't understand retail. So now they brought somebody in to kind of help be that uh, point of contact for the day-to-day -day execution. It used to be an operational person. Operation doesn't understand HR. So they've really changed that and, and built another role there. So most of our recruitment now today is going forward what does success look like three years from now? So we're designing this program to be not only relevant today, but to be relevant three years from now and to keep it relevant ongoing. So that's, that's where we're heading right now. So you're really speaking the language of the industry now um, between the collaboration of everyone. Does this work in conjunction with the job bank as well? It does. It does. It, it's, it certainly does. I mean, uh, that's the whole benefits. Well, I shouldn't say the whole benefit. It's, yeah. it's a piece of the benefits. You know, the benefits to an association like this as a nonprofit are various. We're like a, we're like a target in the middle and there are points coming in. Every member has a use. Every member might have a point of difference of where they use it. So again, it's not one for all. Basically, be it uh, the retailer, the wholesaler, the jobber, um, everyone involved really benefits from this. But I see it as being the, the consumer in the end is served better. Absolutely. Absolutely. The consumer is the ultimate goal. Nothing happens in, in retail world unless a case is sold. 
I mean, you and I are consumers. We certainly look at products and we try today to evaluate those. Of course, the technology there it's today with the codes and everything else to sit there and scan it and see where it's cheaper. I mean, showrooming, everything has changed dramatically, but the computer won't replace that consumer. You and I are a consumer and we're an impulse consumer. So it's important that that retailer has that product there in front of them at the right price at the right time. We execute those programs in a lot of cases. Some are done ex internally, so we try to be that external resource to get it done and keep it on the shelf so their associates can sell. You have to be very versatile in your approach, I imagine, because you're talking about non-food products as well as food products that you provide. All product lines. Uh, it, it crosses, again, every channel. I mean, natural products is such a growing industry, and here we are in Colorado as a hub. You know, my background is, is coming from that area. That is a huge niche market that people really have to take a peek at. The old days, everybody looked at conventional grocery, and that was it. And they would look a little bit in apparel, maybe a little bit in, in uh, convenience and sporting goods, but it's not as diverse as it is. Natural is touching more points of channels than you ever thought before. 60% of the sales in natural organic are going through conventional stores, but six, probably less than 60% deals of food sales are coming through conventional. They're coming through alternative channels. So your dollar stores, your convenience stores, your drug stores, they're all picking up a piece. So we have to be very diverse in our menu of services. And it's really not difficult to operate in a retailer channel, whether it's drug, food. You have to understand what the rules of engagement are. We, as an association, our goal is to make, make sure that we're front and center with the cutting edge for retailers, manufacturers, and the service companies to come together in a shared experience to make sure that we're giving the consumer the end result, which is product on the shelf, at the right price, right time. Wow. At, at what stage of the game would you like to see people partner up with you? Is this early on or is this after they've experienced some challenges? You know, it, it again, it goes to that very, very program. We've got members and we've got members potentially sitting out there that aren't even aware this service is here. This wow. association has been around 17 years. Unfortunately, the name NARMS, which was previously there, had an association in probably the first four or five years. And once technology took it, it didn't have a brand platform. No one understood it outside the membership of who we are, what we are, what we did. So that's why we certainly had to change things to become more professional and really start to bring these services out to a broader audience, not only nationally, but internationally. And so we're getting a lot more exposure through a lot of the trade media pieces that we're doing. Like I say, we, we came out to see here because 2013 is a year that's going to go down in the books for you all. It was a year for rebranding, but it's more than changing the name. It's really redefining uh, the evolution and progress of your company here. It really is. The members, they own this association. It's not a company as in a traditional company. They have a piece of this because they invest in this. So it's in their best interest under a shared platform to be the end result for everyone, not just specific to themselves like maybe 15 years ago. Now it's, it's a broader piece. Today you may go to one event and think, well, that's what I do today. Well, tomorrow here comes an opportunity because of the technology. I didn't even think about that. Wow, I heard that from somebody from a manufacturer that works in the electronic side. That same pain may come over on the grocery side or natural foods, whatever it may be. Obviously, this rebranding that we're going through here in 2013, it's more than a name change, but I want to talk about the name Retail Excellence and Standards. Why that? Well, that name came about really with a lot of thought leadership and focus groups. Uh, Rhonda Bauer, which is our senior director, she spent a lot of time in researching you know, who we were before. It was first to know who you were before you can discover where you need to go. And so during that process, we discovered that our name wasn't really relevant in an industry that we should be. Mm -hmm. So secondly, it became really simple by looking at what the, associate, the association needed to be, not necessarily our members, because our companies are different. Sure. It's what the association, you're a part of the association, what it stands for, not what you do internally yourself. And I think that's a hard place for you know, members to break away because they always felt like, wow, National Association of Retail Marketing Services is us. No, it really isn't. Mm -hmm. So that's what we really tried to do, is strategically look at where we are and where we needed to go, and how does this name equate to professionalism. 
So this was really a forward thinking move on the part of the company, showing that you as well as your members are ready for the future, whatever changes may come. And I imagine retail is always changing. Absolutely. Uh, there isn't a retailer that, in my opinion, in my retailer background, you will never ever back them into a corner. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you don't want to. You want to be a solution. You want to be it proactively. Being reactive in any industry puts you behind. So for us as an association, we have to be proactive and we have to have what I would suggest is senior level thought leadership. Our board is very robust in that. We've got a key committees working in recruitment, uh, accreditation, which is our certification program. Uh, we've got committees over the service entities. We've got service members that offer insurance or software programs to our members and to our retailers. So it's a very diverse membership, but they all have a piece of it and they all have to take ownership. And the members take ownership. Folks, take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're going to see is the website information for the World Alliance for Retail Excellence and Standards. You're going to see their contact information there as well. On the website, um, you can take a look at some of the uh, certification program they have there as well. They have many, many tabs full of resources that will help you decide whether if you want to join this membership and really gain a lot of the benefits they have as well. Remember, retail is evolving. And World Alliance has the answers to ageless challenges. This is Gary Atencio with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.